The Scottish wildcat is enshrined as a protected species in British law, and for the law to function and to fulfil its purpose, of course, it has to be possible to identify what is a Scottish wildcat. And you might think that that's pretty simple because you can pick up any book, or any field guide about British mammals or world mammals and find some sort of description of the Scottish wildcat. But the reason it becomes difficult is because of crossbreeding between the Scottish wildcat and the domestic cat. The two are very closely related. Indeed, the ancestor of the domestic cat is the wild cat. So of course they're closely related, and then when you get them cross-breeding, um, the difficulty of distinguishing between them becomes very complicated. Now, well, in collaboration with Oxford University, we've been examining the different features of and markings of the uh, fur of different wildcats that have been collected over the last hundred years. And then we've been doing a sophisticated statistical analysis to work out which of those are most closely associated with wildcats and which are not. And from that we found that there were seven key pelage characteristics which could be used to identify a wildcat. Firstly, there are usually about four of these stripes which run along the crown and the nape of the neck. And if you notice in the wildcat, they tend to be quite broad and quite wavy. You also get two stripes which occur over the shoulders and you also get a stripe which runs along the lower back but which always stops at the root of the tail. The tail itself is characteristically bushy uh, with these distinct rings on it and it has this distinct blank, blunt black tip. You also tend to get distinct stripes on the flanks and the rump of the animal although sometimes these stripes do break up. This is another wildcat which shows, uh, which is in uh, the winter coat, which shows similar characteristics. You see there's a slight difference uh, between the cats. The, the stripes tend to be uh, less clear in the summer coat compared with the winter coat. If we take a look at a hybrid cat, although in overall color and markings, it looks quite similar to these wildcats, there are some fundamental differences. If we look again at the front end, you'll notice that these stripes are much thinner and much straighter in comparison to the wildcats. Also, there's a confusion of stripes that occur in the shoulder region. And the dorsal stripe, although it's very distinct, actually continues onto the tail itself. And you'll also notice, particularly in this region here, that the stripes are broken up into a, a distinct series of spots and you can see that these characters are actually coming from domestic cats by looking at a domestic cat skin. This domestic cat was actually uh, donated to the museum as being a wild cat so if people thought this was a wild cat it shows absolutely splendidly while it's, while it's a domestic cat and you'll notice again that these stripes on the neck are very thin and very straight very much more similar to the hybrid. And you'll notice also that the stripe here goes clearly onto the tail, joining all the rings on the tail together. And you'll notice that the spots on the rump here are very distinct indeed. You'll also notice that there's a distinct difference in the shape of the tail. Whereas in the wild cat, the tail is very bushy and blunt. In the domestic cat, it's very slender and tapering. And this hybrid has an intermediate tail shape which, which is between these two forms. So in fact, it's generally quite easy to distinguish between wildcats, domestic cats, and hybrids by looking at some of these key characters.